All right, this is to work down problem two on our module three practice problems at the uh, on page 36 of your student text. So this question is looking for uh, the power produced by the turbine. Um, power is work done at a rate, so another way to look at that is specific, uh, specific work or the rate of which work is done, uh, which is what power is. That was redundant. All right. This question gives you a steam flow, 10,000 pounds mass per minute of steam. You have to pay attention to the units because maybe we would have to convert hours to minutes or minutes to hours, depending on what we're dealing with here. But there's nothing, I don't see any reason to do any conversions yet. 10,000 pounds mass per minute of steam pass through a turbine doing a specific work of 115 BTUs per pound mass. Well, that's beautiful. What I would look for in a future version of this question is, you know how we do those ideal, uh, how much work is the turbine doing, given these uh, initial pressure and quality conditions, and it exhausts to this uh, other pressure, like a condenser or atmospheric pressure, and you figure out how much work was done by the turbine. That's what this is saying. This is saying the work done by the turbine was 115 BTUs per pound mass. So we're just going to use that 115 BTUs per pound mass, and we have a, a mass. We have 10,000 pounds mass per minute, so now we have a rate of work. We'll end up with, the pounds mass will cancel out, and we have BTUs per minute, which is the power produced by the turbine, the work done over a rate of time, over a period of time. So that's pretty easy. Let's do that real quick. Um, and we'll do the latter problem, 10,000 uh, pounds mass per minute times 115 BTUs uh, per pound mass. This is how easy that problem is. Equals, well, 10,000 times 115 is 115 one, two, three, four. One million one hundred and fifty thousand BTUs per minute. That's the answer number two. Let's take a let's take that a step further. Uh, there is a conversion, handy dandy conversion in your steam at the back of your steam tables. For let's figure out how many kilowatts that is. Well, there it is. Uh, BTUs per second, BTUs per minute. So in your conversion factors, uh, page 93 of your steam tables, there's a BTUs per minute converting converts directly to kilowatts. So let's add that conversion to it. Um, and we can just set it all up in one problem again. 10,000 pounds mass per minute. 115 BTUs per pound mass, and we have 0 0.0175843 kilowatts per BTU pound mass. And that gives me my answer in kilowatts. Let me make sure pounds. or BTUs per minute. Yeah, I knew I missed something up. So the BTUs cancel out, the minutes cancel out, and I'm left with kilowatts. So we do that on our calculator. 10,000 times 115 times 0 0.0175843 equals 20,221.95 kilowatts. Huh. So 20 megawatts. Interesting. 20,000 kilowatts 
it 10,000 pounds mass per minute of steam flow doing specific work of 115 BTUs per pound mass. And the 115 BTUs per pound mass, as you recall, it can be determined from your Molier diagram. So you can look, expect to see a different problem where you're given a, an initial starting condition on a turbine. Uh, maybe we give you the steam pressure and then you do the throttling problem to the governor valves. And then you do the specific work of the turbine down to a condenser at some uh, vacuum. And that change in enthalpy is the specific work of the turbine. And I say specific work because it's per pound mass. And then we multiply that pounds mass times a flow rate, and then we get a BTUs per minute, a rate at which work is done, our power, kilowatts. I hope that helped with uh, question two. In fact, it went way above and beyond on question two because it's, all it's asking for is multiply 10,000 pounds mass per minute times 115 BTUs per pound mass, and that gives you your power. But always look at these with, okay, what else could I do with this? What, other, what else do I have information for? How, you know, what else can I solve? All right.